following is a special presentation of WEDU Tampa, St. Petersburg, Sarasota. Is it better to be born in America with all the wealth and opportunity that are part of our society? Or is it better to be born in a foreign land, perhaps even a third world country where the American dream is a distant reality? Well, you're about to meet a unique entrepreneur who was born in Africa, schooled in India, and who came to Tampa Bay to pursue his dreams, and within a generation, he became one of Florida's most successful businessmen and one of this area's leading philanthropists. Up next on the Suncoast Business Forum. Globalism is playing a greater role in all our lives. Globalism means learning to live and compete in the changing world. Dr. Kiran C. Patel, chairman of the Patel Foundation for Global Understanding, came to Tampa nearly 25 years ago and turned a small medical practice into one of the nation's largest managed care companies. Since selling its company, WellCare, several years ago, the Patel Foundation has provided millions of dollars in financial support to the University of South Florida, the Tampa Bay Performing Arts Center, the Pepin Heart Institute, as well as hospitals, health clinics, schools in Africa and India. Dr. Patel, welcome to the Suncoast Business Forum. Thank you for having me here. As I mentioned, you were born and raised in Africa, went to school in India to study medicine, and then came to the U.S. to actually begin practicing medicine. Tell us about growing up in your home country, Zambia. Sometimes I say that I was born in Africa grew up there, beautiful country, beautiful in the sense that I was in an environment that I enjoyed and grew up to learn. People were very nice, things were wonderful. Our needs were less and therefore felt very content in the environment I was. But overall I had felt uh, a, a wonderful country, wonderful place to be in. My father was always emphasizing on education and our life revolved primarily from school to home and to school again. No vacations or anything of that type. By that I mean not going overseas or anywhere. And the first time went to India at age maybe 10, but till then just in the same town and grew up and, and had a good time there. Did you have brothers, sisters, other family members living with you in, in Zambia? Yes, uh, I have a family of three other siblings, elder sister, two younger brothers. Amongst the boys, I was the old, eldest. Mm -hmm. Tell me more about your father. You mentioned him. He was a businessman, am I right? Yeah. My father he was a businessman, a mentor for me, a person that really molded us, our family and myself to what we are today. Very principled man, Gandhian philosophy always eager to help somebody in any way he could and try to do the best for the society. He also was deprived of education primarily because of his family needs has to leave college in first year to go and earn a living. And I believe it was his desire to ensure his children would never have that uh, problem of not achieving the education. And fortunately for him, because of his foresight and vision and his perseverance, I became a physician. My younger brother did a PhD in pharmacy and my youngest did his MBA in, in business. So all of us did well. Uh, my younger brother in, in, in stays in Utah, was also fortunate enough to build a $300 million company took it public and sold it himself. My youngest brother was here, a partner with me in my business, so we are very, very blessed and fortunate that our family overall did well, and I think that is thanks to my father. So entrepreneurship really runs in your family. Yes, uh, he also was perceived bigger than what he was, and in his times did a lot more for himself, his family, and his community than what I would say I did for my, for, uh, what I could do for, for in current times. Mm -hmm. 
it was part of his philosophy to to share to share the wealth to to reach out to others exactly on on a small level to the smallest person to the uh, affluent he was still the same simple man uh, comfortable to deal with all aspects of people and and deal with them fairly and properly now when you were growing up in Zambia the country was actually called Rhodesia yes and it it was a country that had apartheid yes segregation of the races and for that reason at age 12 I had to leave my home because there was no high school for Indians in my hometown Broken Hill I had to go to the capital Lusaka where only in that year the first school for Asians was built, a high school. Prior to that, we would have had to go to southern Rhodesia, where for the whole between Malawi, which is we used to be Nyasaland, northern Rhodesia and southern Rhodesia, we had three high schools for Indians or coloreds as they would call it. Uh, when you mentioned apartheid, one incident I remember vividly, I had gone to see a cricket match in Copper Belt and on our way back had stopped at a gas station and wanted to fill some gasoline and at that point one thought of having a Coca-Cola uh, and we were not served Coke. We could not go into the shop because it was for whites only. Well, how do you feel apartheid? experiencing apartheid and discrimination firsthand affected you over the course of your life? I believe, I would say in a positive manner, in the sense that I always knew that I have to do better than my counterpart to succeed in life. And that was instilled in me that I better be top of the top and in, in my father would sometimes say, if you are number two in the class, don't even bother to come to the house. So it was that type of uh, mindset that you have to be number one. You have to do the better than anybody else to be somewhere where you want to be. So you took what some would perceive as adversity and turned it to your advantage. I would say so. And like I said, that is my mindset that if anybody can do anything, I can do it better and cheaper. Well, that, and that worked for you later in your career. Now, at 18, you left home yes. to study at the university in India. Yes. See, because uh, by that time, Zambia had received independence. Uh, there was only one new university in the country. And not being comfortable of a new university environment, I opted to go overseas. I had a choice of going to Britain or to India. And my father felt that by going to India, at least I will know a little bit about my roots and my culture better and appreciate it better. And thank God I went there because that's where I met my wife. Uh, had I not been there, I might have married somebody else in London or somewhere in England. I don't know what could have happened to me. So you met your wife, Pallavi, at medical school. Yes, she was my classmate. 